What up, friends? Welcome to this week's edition of Feinbolt. I am your host, Jeffrey Feinbolt, here with you talking all things Los Angeles Chargers football. And what a time, baby. What a time to be supporting the powder blue and sunshine gold. Man, I have had so much fun the last couple of days with people sucking up to me. Not actually, but life is better when the internet's my friend. Let's just be honest when I can go to all my web pages, my favorite ones, read all these nice things, watch all these nice video clips, and my feed has been absolutely inundated with you guys sending me old clips of Brandon Staley press conferences. I'm going to get to those in a moment because I warned you about it. I warned you about it. It only took four freaking football games. But we'll, I'm going to get to that in a minute because everything that's happening, he kind of told me. He told us, all of us, every time he opened his mouth, what was going to happen. He didn't give away a game plan, but he told us all winter. We are on the cutting edge now. Speaking of the cutting edge here at Mayo Media Network, we have you absolutely covered the spread pick show with myself, Tim Anderson, and of course, the one and only Pat Mayo is already out. We have a blast. Tim is more confident that Jets are going to make the playoffs than I am the Chargers are going to make the playoffs. I mean it, and I'm pretty confident the Chargers will make the playoffs as well. Um, Later in the week, Pozzola, Cam, and Pat, I, I, I'm probably my favorite show on the absolute, on the network, probably my favorite show on the internet. So don't forget to check that out and everything else wall to wall daily over at Mayo Media as well. Prize picks enter their weekly network contest, make a five man entry. Don't include Monday Night Football. I made that mistake. I made that mistake and hijacked a, a good season I was having, but we're battling. I'm beating all the boys with my winners. So far this year, at least in our little internal MMN contest, but you get in that every single week. Enter, make a deposit onto, onto prize picks using that promo code MMN, and we will give you a 50% instant match bonus up to $100 and play in the weekly contest. Make a five man entry for $7.11. Do it every single week. You are entered in with us weekly prizes as well. So all that great stuff over at Mayo Media, like, sub, support, all of it, all of it. So like, leave a comment. It would be an honor. If you want to do me a favor, that would be it. Thank you. Darnold Parham, 40 to 1. We're feeling good, friends. We are feeling good. But right now, first place, first place for the Chargers, not only at, atop the AFC West, but among the American Football Conference overall standings. That doesn't mean anything to me. I'm looking at the division. But when the official Twitter page of the NFL tweets out like a playoff picture after week four, I can't help but look. And I notice we're at the top and that's flattering, but that's so tiebreaker. And, you know, there's like a bunch of three and one teams. We're not making anything to do with that. We are excited about our position in the West. Those two division wins already, especially the win versus Kansas City. Um, these are crucial, crucial. I still think the Chiefs will rise. I don't think that's a bold statement. Uh, you know, like you, they were my Super Bowl pick, but hey, let's make it battle to the end and let's go win our 11, 12 games and get into the tournament. Okay, let's go. Browns on deck, nervous about them. I could make a case, you know, our toughest, a very complete opponent. And I'm going to talk about them in a few moments. And for the most part, I have 90% nice things to say and 10% bad things to say about the Cleveland Browns, but just coach Staley here. I'm going to wax my own poetic for a few moments. It actually might just be the entire show. Okay. Okay. So I'm getting like a flickering screen. So I just want to make sure I didn't lose anything. I hope I didn't. Um, but okay. Coach Staley. <clears throat> I told you guys in the off season, every time he spoke, I fell more in love. Like every time he spoke, it felt different than anything I have encountered in the past. And I know many of you wanted to poo-poo that away to just say, blah, blah, Feinberg bias, blah, blah. You did the same for Lynn. You did the same for McCoy. And I would like get on my knees and tell you, no, 
I didn't. I didn't. I promise I didn't. I carried their water up a hill. I did carry their water. I did hold their water for them. They were the coach of my favorite team on the planet, my favorite thing on the planet outside of my family. What I did not do was be a salesman for them. What I, not, what I never did was a, be a salesman for them. And people that don't know me way longer than you, they know I'm not getting crazier. You're just getting to know me better. But what they know for a fact is how I felt around those hirings. I was cautiously optimistic. I was hoping for the best. I did not get on a pulpit and scream, holy bejesus, we just hired something so freaking special here. Like, we are doing it different now. And that's exactly what happened. I, I don't know if you guys remember, if you watched any of the off-season content that I put out with Pat, from, from win totals to season preview to schedule, it was like, I don't know how to quantify this because many people would just say winning a Super Bowl or something. But I was like, I want to bet anybody that my coach will be really good. And the two of us could have made a bet and you could take up, we could agree on a neutral third party beforehand who in three or four years can just say, yeah, he's a good coach. He's a bad coach. I didn't know how to quantify it in terms of wins, in terms of playoff wins, in terms of a Super Bowl. I thought that would be silly, but I just promised this guy was going to pass the test. And is it early? Absolutely. It is four freaking games. But I am telling you, he is different. He is different. He is what the next coaches are going to be wanting. He is what the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to send Urban Meyer to the goddamn curve for and say, we need something like that for our kid Trevor. Every time he opened his mouth in the winter, in the summer, in the spring, in the lead up to the season, he told us what was happening was going to happen. No, not that they were going to win the games. No, not he wasn't giving away game plan and game call and play call, but he just made it very clear we're going to be doing things different. We are going to be playing with a consistent aggressiveness, a Ruth, like a, a Ruth, a nonstop aggressiveness that was going to happen. We were going to take full advantage of fourth down math. And I mean, it's been absolutely insane. Um, and I said in that final show with Pat that I can't wait. I love football. I watch the snippets of your coaches conferences. And you can see who does it different. You can see who explains it different. You can just see who the good ones are. And I said, like, as a guy that's sort of keen to some of that in that league minutia, it's only a matter of time before all you guys that don't care about that stuff, and, and you shouldn't. I'm not telling you to care about it, but you like the league enough that the national networks or your favorite Twitter follows are going to put good stuff in front of you and you're going to um, digest it. And I said, it's only a matter of time before you get hit with a clip of this guy talking about how he thinks it differently and how he thinks it. And you're going to be like, holy bejesus. And that happened a lot this week. The carrier pigeons were out. With Staley's old comments about running the football and what that means and how that just affects the pace. And you don't need to be effective running the football to have your play action be effective. That's borne out in the statistics. So there it all is. I'm in absolute heaven with Coach Staley. I'm in absolute heaven with Justin Herbert. I don't know if we're there yet, friends, but we are on the precipice of people consistently saying, I'm betting the Chargers, and you go, why? And they go, Coach Quarterback, because that's the easiest thing to do. I mean, if you just bet the NFL on coach quarterback, you probably, and didn't overthink a lot of other things, you probably have come up pretty good. So that's always a fun place. When I'm going to go listen to other people give their picks and they're debating Charger games and they give us the same respect they give the other elite coach quarterback combos, be like, nah, it's a tough game, but eh, I'm just going to put my money on the coach quarterback combo that I absolutely trust the most. And guess what? It's Justin Herbert and Brandon Staley. Oh my God, it's my world now. I'm living in it. Imagine going from Anthony Linda. Just imagine it. Honestly, think about it. 
Like, think about that in the context of females. If you're a heterosexual male. Like, if you're dating a girl that's Anthony Lynn, and then you're dating a girl that's Brandon Staley, what they look like in the proverbial head, head, head coaching capability um, binoculars or glasses, whatever you would call them. I think you know what I'm saying. It's kind of weird. It's kind of no different than going from a soccer stadium to SoFi. I mean, none of this stuff feels right. We're the Chargers. I'm supposed to be punching uphill, friends. I'm supposed to be punching uphill for respect. But now my menchies blow up with comments about how amazing my coach is, how forward thinking my coach is, how cutting edge my coach is. My coach! Feels weird. Feels weird. We haven't really been in, 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 this, um, in this place. So I, I'm excited. I'm excited. And it was, it was a pleasure for me. And even a lot of those guys have reached out and I'll be doing hits hopefully next week and, and did some this week, but going on radio hits in the summer, you know, people like to have me on. I'm invited on to all kinds of shows to talk golf. Naturally, lots of people love football. Football's pretty one's, you know, favorite, even if they love golf. And they're like, well, you know, now that we got you here, let's like talk about chargers. What do you think? And I'd say, guys, every time this coach opens his mouth, I fall in love. He says something that just hits me so hard in the right places that this is going to be different. And we're changing our movies now. We are writing new movies. We are writing movies that your coach is trying to copy. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Honestly, press conferences with, with Staley are just so enlightening. And he's not combative at all. He's very descriptive and he explains things so well. It's so amazing. <coughs> and it wasn't in my notes, but I'm just going to say it. He almost started to cry when talking about Derwin James in the same way I could almost start to cry when talking about Derwin James. Derwin James plays five positions. He's playing five positions out there. The star, the money, the X, the Y. I don't even know football well enough to explain all the things that Derwin James is doing. So when Derwin James makes a mistake, and I don't even think it was a mistake. He just got beat by like one of the fastest guys in the leagues on rugs on a deep ball. Staley, like when talking to the media says, no, that's on coach. That's on coach because coach is asking too much of Derwin. And we don't even see it like as the layman football fan. And give me the all 22. I'll watch every freaking snap of Derwin. I'll watch every freaking snap of Derwin, but he's playing safety. He's playing corner. He's playing linebacker. He's playing defensive end. He's playing everything. Both safety positions, all linebacker positions, pass rushing positions. Like he is a do it all football player. Every snap a quarterback needs to give him extra special attention. When the quarterback calls hot between our standing situations from our ends to Derwin James, Quarterbacks need an extra third of a second or three quarters of a second to process what we're doing. And that can be a difference. And that is coach Staley. And people aren't being so mean to Joe Lombardi anymore either. So it's real nice. It's really nice. What's happening. And fantasy guys upset. Mike Williams didn't get the ball. Well, boo hoo. Boo hoo. Mike Williams didn't get the ball. They just threw it to Jared Cook. Who's been great. And Mia Culpa for me, I was worried about him. What an amazing player. And with those fourth downs, they're not just going it on fourth downs. They're going for it. They know what their plays are going to be. And they're getting the matchups. They're getting the matchups they want. They're already winning those fourth downs pre-snap. Oh, my God, it's all happening. Can we beat the Browns? That would be tons of fun. This weekend, it's the Browns. It's the Chargers. I am super nervous about this game. The Browns, they're a hard team to get a read on, but... I believe in talent. I believe in the Browns. Uh, I'm a super uh, big, big supporter of what I think they're going to be capable of this year and the years ahead. So I consider this a premium test for the Chargers, and it stacks up on some other tests that they've had lately. Very difficult, very difficult schedule. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, the Browns, 
They should have beaten the Chiefs. And in hindsight, it's like you really should have beaten the Chiefs because the Chiefs proved in September you can beat them at least this year. And they played a really weird game versus the Texans. And they played the sabotage game versus Justin Fields and the Bears where, like, Matt Nagy gave it to them. And then they played a close, low scoring, but weird game last week versus the Vikings. Hard team to get a read on, but they could potentially run it down our throats and give Baker some confidence and keep us in trouble. And they have the defensive ends and certain de defensive schematics to cause Herbert and the guys real trouble. So I'm real nervous about that game. And I'll be honest, I would be happy if the Chargers next two games, the Ravens and the Browns, Browns, Ravens, I'd be happy with the split. I'll take four and two into that bye, and then the schedule lightens up. It lightens up a little bit. Uh, not too much, but I mean, the Patriots feels like a light up compared to what they've played. They got the Steelers coming up. It feels like a light up game. I mean, these are all after the bye, and hopefully after the bye, Balaga, and Justin Jones, who maybe even can come back this week, which would be huge for the run defense situation. And maybe that's why they sat him out last week, because he's been battling the injury, because they have such a dominant running team up, up next, because I guess they liked what they, they took their chances with the Raiders. And that defense was great versus the Raiders. If I had to give a defense a game ball versus the Raiders, it's going to like Tranquil or Frackle. What a great performance. What an absolute great performance. So I'm super fired up. I'll be laying the point, point and a half on the Chargers. That's no sweat for me. Uh, um, yeah, so here we are, boys. Three and one at the quarter pole, first place in the division. It says first place in the conference, but we're not going to look at that for at least a few more weeks. Let's see if we can find a way to make it 4-1. Let's be the team that, that at least the most optimistic Charger fans thought we could be. And I'd be honest, like I didn't see four and one attainable. I thought this team was going to be good, going to be competitive. I was super excited about Coach Staley. I was confident that this was the guy. But at the same time, it's a hard schedule and a new scheme. So if you actually heard me give my early season predictions, it was like, you know, let's just go tit for tat early. Win one, lose one, win one, lose one, lose one, win one. But once we get to that schedule break, then we got to take off. What's great is that we have gotten these wins before the break in the schedule, while the schedule has been hard. So I'm super fired up. I am Jeff Feinberg. I'm going to Vegas. I'm going to be off a bender. So I can't wait. I can't wait because I'm going to Vegas. Get a, you know, it's nice. Had the Chargers lost on Monday, I'm probably not packing much powder in the in the in the, in the bag. Like I don't need, I don't need to get into it with Raider Vato in a casino lobby because I'm in my powder, uh, and they just whip my ass. But guess what? A couple extra pieces of powder coming this time. Now, also, it's like half my wardrobe. It's like to dress like a coach or something. Authentic Herbert, though. That's why you can see my pasty whites. It's the authentic. Authentics, I got to say that they're, they're, the difference between authentic and the high grade replicas is very small. It's very small, but I don't know for a player like Herbert, I do it all premium, but you can see, I got these like shoulder straps because you know, the, it's authentic and you think there'd be someone who wears these and pay for these like has shoulder pads under them, but no, not me. Just my um, polar bear skin. Look at that farmer. Look at that. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Yeah, you can't do that without effort. You really can't. You really can't. There are places on my body that have never been touched by the sun. Like I'm pale as a polar bear. Let's go. It's actually, you know, one of the, I don't hate it that it's getting a little cooler. Hoodies, shorts, but I'm going to Vegas. I'm super fired up. Now I'm rambling. So it's probably a good time um, to end what we're doing here. Mail Media Network, we got you covered. The Spread Pick Show with myself, Tim and Pat, and the banger. Friday show coming out um, later in the week with Pat and Cam and Pizzola, my absolute favorite and everything else in between from the golf to, 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 to the daily updates. It's all going down. Pat and his DraftKings. You guys all know that you all know what's there. I mean, you're only watching me because I'm a dingleberry on the mail machine. I'm Jeff Feinberg. We will see you next week. Hopefully four and one. Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be something to take down another AFC powerhouse? Let's do it. Fine Bolt out.